I can't imagine Halloween without a ghost story. Can you? No. I'd like to summon one of our original storytellers back to the spooky stage. I call Hanashi. I can hear them, fast approaching my tiny helpless love. Those slow, clumsy equine slaves, slaves pushing them ever closer to their demise. How dare they even think their mission so valiant. They have no idea how much their arrogance will cost them. They want to control the land, the creatures, the elements with their selfishness seen as the greater good. I must push myself faster, cleave through the air to protect my tiny love. My whiskers whip through the wind. My tail snaps behind me. If they reach her, this lake, its magic, its bounty and creatures, my very soul will fall to their ignorance. Desperation urges me on. My scales slice through the air. I round the mountain's edge, my lair coming into view. I strain my eyes as my heart leaps into my throat. I see a tiny burst of flame issuing from the cave. She is holding her own, but she falls back. Her soft, young scales will not last long against their blades. I drive myself forward like a spear to its target. I extend my claws, grind my teeth, and scream out my heart's roar. She echoes with her tiny voice. The ground pulls me towards her, beckons me to land, to save all from the invasion of man. I come down hard and fast. My talons pierce one horse and rider. Their fragile bones crumble beneath my weight. Their innards gush warm and sticky between my claws. The satisfying stench of their entrails fills the air. Four foolish men still pursue my child. One steed, ignoring the commands of its rider, looks back. His mindless gaze changes to one of recognition, awe, and then horror as it realizes its folly. It turns, trying to outrun its fate, but I snatch it by the throat, throwing its rider from its back. I bite down quick, snapping the neck in my jaws, releasing its sad soul from its servitude. The rider will not be so lucky. I hear a weapon being drawn, and another cry from the, within the cave, this time a gurgling cry of pain, and my mind erupts into pure rage. I throw the dead carcass aside, and hail quick and deep and spew forth my liquid fire. It envelops the third horse and rider who run away screaming in pure misery. The last three humans turn their attention to me. The throne rider rises to meet the others. The fourth rider dismounts his frenzied horse. And the last rider, the one true offender, saunters from the mouth of the cave, a satisfied look in his eyes. I look to the edge of his sword. The crimson blow, glowing blood flows down its edge. The essence of my tiny love fills my nostrils and all is lost. My soul splinters into a million shards. My entire being is consumed with fury. My bellows of pure sorrow deafen the world. My sight fades to red as nothing but pure seething hatred for all creation overtakes my mind. I snap recklessly at the armored men, missing my marks for all logic and reason have left me. They begin to cut and slash feebly as they bang away at my thick armor, trying to break open old wounds, looking for weaknesses in my mail. My teeth gnash, empty, still blindly searching as the enemy takes formation within my contracting coils. I will not let them leave. Tears pour down my face as two raise their blades, and the third, the killer of my kin, raises a bow. The arrowhead is as sanguine as the color that fills my vision, fashioned to bring down its ancient target. My broken soul prays it will find its place within my heart. But then, 
a tiny cry of defiance, a cry to rally a mother from her anguish, a cry that clears my mind and mends my soul at once. The arrow flies as my head clears, and I snatch the mystical dart from the air. Like a twig, I break its shaft, and my eyes narrow. The faces of the men fall as they realize that all is lost. I lower my growling head as the throne rider takes off towards the opening beneath my tail. I bring my foot down squarely upon his head, driving it through his torso, abdomen, and then to the ground, splashing his blood and bits across the faces of those doomed allies. The tiny cries grow a little louder, a little stronger, bringing my spirit up to the sky, causing my heart to soar once more. With a grin, I open my maw and bring it down around the other swordsman, snapping it closed, feeling his bones and armor crunch between my teeth. His liquids burst forth, burning, musky, and metallic to the taste. I chew slowly and with great satisfaction. But my greatest satisfaction is yet to come to the greatest defender of them all the one that dared step forth into my domain, the one that chose to draw a sword against a helpless child, the child of the goddess of the spring. He picks up his sword again, thinking to take his own life. Ha! As if I would let him have control. I bat the little stick of metal away from his hands, breaking his arms as I go. My tail cracks the bones in his legs, and he collapses. The look in his eyes now turns from acceptance of death to the fear of the unknown. I circle him, bringing my head around to the entrance of the cave. My tiny, innocent daughter slowly makes her way to its entrance, limping from the lacerations to her body. Blood flows from her side and a wing hangs limp. I quickly swallow the morsel within my mouth and begin to tend to her wounds. They vanish with each healing lick of my tongue, bathing her in pure love, warmth, and happiness. The man stares in amazement, as if to disbelieve the love a mother and daughter share. My tiny love, now healed but scarred, stretches and shakes the wetness from her fur and scales. She proudly steps towards her foe and hisses. My, warm heart, my heart warms, knowing her spirit was never broken. She looks to me to make sure I'm watching, and then back to her prey. She takes a deep, tiny breath, and with great pride and much effort, belches her flame upon the man. As he's writhing in agony of a slow death, she turns back and smiles. My soul sings at her accomplishment. Now content, I curl around my tiny love and we settle down. With happiness in my heart, I listen to the little crunching noises she makes with her tiny little mouth as she dines beneath a quiet sky of twinkling stars. Thank you.